So uh, heifer herd. Uh, these are last year's so 2020 and 2021 heifers that we retain. Wow. Everybody's a dwarf, obviously. Yeah. So they all, that was something I was wondering about. They all carry chondrodysplasia? Yep. Every one of these girls do, yeah. So even your Highlanders too? Yep. They're okay. not pure Highlands. Mm -hmm. So they're uh, they're bred with a a bull that carries dextric dwarf. 61, okay. he's 61 percent. He's a high part okay. colored bull. So he's so he's got some white. So how old are these? Um, these girls are all a year old, except for this one closest. No, some well, someone in there somewhere is oh the one right over there. She's she'll be two. That one will be two. Wow. These these girls are so much smaller than ours. <laughs> <laughs> Kelsey is what five foot? Yeah, I'm six. five four. Oh. oh, awesome! Thank you. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> tiny. This is so fun. Aww. Yeah, we thought our Dexters were tiny, and even you know, around us, it's all commercial dairies, so a lot of whole things. And when people see our cows, they laugh at our bullies. That's it. <laughs> 30, six inches, maybe? Oh, no. Not even? Ethel might be 34 at the hip, the hook. <laughs> so when do you think people started breeding Dexter's up? Was that something that happened after? It must have been after they were imported into the U.S.? Well, no, I think always there's been some people that always gear towards bigger cows mm -hmm. and some people that gear towards littler cows. Yeah. I mean, always. Um, the 1980, mid 80s, ADCA had, back then ADCA was the only registry. Okay. No way. And uh, their, I think their shoulder height recommendation was 42 or 44 inches. Okay. So um, I'd have to look to be 100% sure. Um, but I mean, back then that was their recommended shoulder height. Now I think their hip height is 50, yeah. 49, 50 inches. Hey, go away. They get raised with livestock guardian dogs, doesn't make them less friendly. Yeah. <laughs> it makes them more friendly. She thinks that she needs treats all the time. Go away. <laughs> it, it feels Believe. almost more like being um, like in with our goats. Yeah. Like our cows try to stay away from us except for our one jersey. Um, but the goats all just want to come up and nose you. These things are so stinking cute. Yeah, so now this we can is go so look cool. at uh, real cows, big cows, adults. Yeah. What I call big cows. We, uh, this is the little herd that we just sold to some people in Mount Pleasant. Okay. We're slowly, we, they're all traditionals. Um, we're slowly getting rid of our dehorn groups. So okay. Some of our very first cows, but some of these guys are six, seven years old. So they're genetically horned to big with this cow. Yep, yep. And then they have two dwarf, our only two dwarfs so far this year, two dwarf <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. So the Rush family farm is buying them and they're they were they're gonna buy two calves this year and then uh -huh. we listed these four girls and they're like, We'll take them all. I'm like, Well, two of them are bred. You're gonna go from no cows to a lot of cows really quick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they're really excited and they have property, so we can keep going. We got lots of cows. Awesome. The Dexters and the Highlands are all together right now. We divide our herds in the end of July and put them in with the bulls. Okay. So, this year will be the first year we've only had two herds of Dexters in a long time. So uh, in the past, we've done three or four herds of Dexters uh, with three or four bulls so that we could limit, so we wouldn't have to bring in cattle from the outside, right? We would never have to bring in a bull. Last year when we decided to embark on the legacy adventure and not just have traditionals, it meant that we had to get rid of our traditional bulls, or we have to get rid of because they, we don't want them to breed our legacy girls. <clears throat> and then, uh, that just is a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. So, two. We're going to two herds. One with a dwarf bull, and one with a non-dwarf bull. Okay. Because um, we don't think you should breed dwarf to dwarf. Right. Mm -hmm. um, people do it, and people can do whatever they like. But that's not something that we will intentionally do. What happens if you breed dwarf to dwarf? 
So if you breed two dwarfs together 25% of the time, you'll have an aborted fetus, a bulldog calf. Um, I, 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 we have never personally done it, but we have bought cattle that were dwarfs that were bred for a dwarf, either intentionally or unintentionally. Um, we've yet to have a bulldog calf. So I think we have two dwarfs left to go that could possibly be bred to a dwarf girl, okay. uh, this year. <clears throat> and we had we had two last year and we have two this year. Um, I'm pretty sure that Milkweed should have a regular calf because she's past the seven month mark. Okay. And generally they abort by seven months. She's actually due the 4th of July, I think. <clears throat> So this out here, so oh, WRP, right? Can't do anything okay. with it, just fence it up. Um, because of this wetland? Uh, that's all technically wetland oh. cover. Oh, <laughs> um, uh, But this was all CRP. So you can see we grazed the bulls out here mm -hmm. earlier this year, and then we brush hog it to get rid of all the, most of the growth. Okay. We also have a cow that's due today or tomorrow. We're really hoping for a dwarf bull calf. Would this be a keeper then? Nope. Uh, we never pre-sell, and then I pre-sold. <laughs> <laughs> um, John Ball Zoo, which is the oh, zoo in Grand Rapids, yeah. uh, wants a dwarf island bull. Bull, not a bull, a steer. Mm -hmm. um, but well, that's Agnes with her calf, Arabella. Arabella is like a month and a half old. Wow. Agnes is five. You ever see any of your photos like pop up on like the Facebook groups, like marketing mini highlands and stuff for scams? Um, actually, not normally, but occasionally. There's been a few uh, websites that have stolen, uh, like not websites, but Facebook pages that have been created for mini cattle. Right. That try to sell them. We're a little bit, we're pretty legit because we have, I mean, we have a Facebook page, which is very, very old, right? It's, it's at least seven years old. We got like yep. 6,000 followers or something. And then we have Instagram, plus we have a website. So all of those things kind of help people when we post. Right. Um, there's a lot of people that are like, uh, you should never send a deposit. We require everybody to send a deposit if they're buying a live animal. Mm -hmm. Dude, come and give it to us in person, but um, we don't hold animals for people without a deposit. Right. <clears throat> we have a livestock contract on our website, which we require every animal to that leaves our farm to have signed before it leaves. Written by a lawyer. It protects us and the buyer. Mm -hmm. This is one of our smallest girls. <laughs> this is poor little Florence. Florence is two. <laughs> she was born in the year of the nurse on Florence Nightingale's birthday, Aww. which is yeah. the mother of nursing, uh. and uh, it was at the beginning of the pandemic in 2020. She's a perfect name. Yeah. She's going to stay forever, even though she's kind of small and she's got a weird butt. <laughs> so who would you breed her to? Like uh, she like... she was in with a bull, a dwarf bull last okay. year. Okay. Uh, I don't, I don't but know. But she's, is she chondro or? Nope. No, she's just small. <laughs> she's just two. No, yep, she's small. She's out of, uh, Faith, which is one of our smaller, she's, Faith isn't small, but she's a slower grower. This is BB. So do you think she's big or small? Uh, she's still smaller than ours. She's, she's one of the She's about biggest. the size of our, how old is Jolene? Jolene's a year and a half now. I think te te our temple's about the same size. You I think, think so? temple's a little She's bit wide. beefier. Yeah, wider. Uh, BB, I think, is eight. Eight? Do you notice any benefits to your farm from having a, the wetland protected areas? Uh, yeah, we do have lots of wildlife, which is fun, right? Tons yeah. of frogs. Bugs aren't awful. I mean, they're not terrible no. right now. That's <laughs> not right now, anyway. Uh, sometimes the evenings are a little rough, but for the most part, bugs are good. Lots of wildlife, frogs, 
in the spring it's like deafening loud out here. <clears throat> oh yeah. Um, we don't really worry about any of the predation. Yeah. Most of our girls are living through town. So, like I said, all the girls are together. So, you will see dwarfs and non dwarfs together, but they'll be separated for breeding. How, um, how big of a job is it for you to separate them out for breeding? You have to call on your friends and family? and. Uh, generally, Chris and I do it alone. Okay. Sometimes we have friends that come and help. It's always easier with one other set of hands. Yeah. We hired a really good farm hand last year. So Unity is our current old lady. She's going to be 16 this year, I think. And I think this will be her last cat. Okay. That's, that's just her. Um, we, you, you had one that was what? How old? Uh, you... In, Inky uh, is, I believe, the oldest Dexter that has recordedly lived. That was a dwarf. And she died here just before her 23rd birthday. And that was just last year? <sighs> was it two years ago now? Two years ago? Um, she, was, she was a dwarf. We actually just sold her son that we bought. He ha we have several of those dwarf girls that we saw are his. Um, she slipped on the ice and broke her hip. So it was just bad luck. Yep, should have kept her in the barn. <laughs> but that's not very nice. No one wants to be in the barn. <clears throat> it was winter. It's cold. Mm -hmm. So um, some of our bigger girls, I guess. Liberty's a pretty big girl. I don't love Liberty's udder either. She might be an embryo carrier this year. Mm. <clears throat> Very full. It is. It's got a lot of capacity. Very big. Don't love it. This is Stacy. Oh. She's a legacy girl. It's like they're doing a runway walk for us. Yeah. <laughs> Chloe is Casey's daughter. She's a legacy girl, and so is Gretchen. Hi, Gala. Gala is a retainer with Florence. We like to retain them in pairs, so. Okay. Gala and Florence were retained as pairs. I see a lot of milkweed out here. They don't, they're not interested. No, sometimes, I mean, they might have eaten the top off that one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> It'll all just get brush hugged yeah. after they eat it. See, we have a couple of done girls. We have uh, three modern girls. So, that done in the back is a modern girl. Mm -hmm. That black cow way back there, she's really, really little. Carly, she's a... She's a modern girl. And then Betty the Bitch is somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Should we be on the lookout? She just hates all the people. She hates oh. everything. She really actually is, she was a, a really good cow, trained milk cow. She came with the Allington herd. Uh, she hates us. She does not like it here. She does not like us as people. Um, it was a traumatic experience offloading and she has never gotten over it. It's been a year. <laughs> it's not gonna change. I'm pretty sure she hates us forever. They definitely have personalities. Oh, this is Daphne. She's obviously a dwarf. There are cats. How somewhere. tall are you, Ryan? 6'3". Uh, 6'3". Six, three. Six, three. Oh. Just to give them. Simple girl. Size so comparison. For <laughs> when you're talking about miniature cattle or um, dwarfs, you talk about height at the hip or the shoulder? The hip. Um, Hook of the hip, it? the goal is 42 or less. Sure. Some people say 43. 30s, right? Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. We should measure our bull just for fun. But even, know. I mean, well, Gal is only two, but even our non dwarf so like you look at mm -hmm. Liberty, yeah. she's not She's not a dwarf. No. Daphne is actually a pretty tall dwarf yeah. for us. Like, imagine if, hey, that's my watch. You can't eat it. It's not for food. <laughs> like, imagine Casey is a dwarf. Like, we can kind of go look to see if we can find the bulls that are out in the woods, but... Um, Just means. to make sure they're still there? No, they're there. <laughs> <laughs> I saw them this That's, morning. We've had some really uh, strong winds the last few days, and we have these old poplar trees that are lining our creek, and it's just my nightmare that one of them is going to fall, and... That's what they do. All the, all yeah. the cows Knocked will get out. layers of fencing so they can escape. Yeah. We fenced our farm like an onion, like ring. So if they breach one layer, they're still okay. contained. Which did happen last week. And there, our cows were in our backyard when we got home. <laughs> <coughs> Rarely has it happened. But generally for us, our cows go to the drive. And then that way. So 
we have um a buddy, uh, Dr. Greg, came over and pregnancy checked our jersey for us. But on his farm, they've got these gates that have like jellyfish tentacles of hot wire that hang down, so you can just drive, drive right through, through. Them, and they pop open and they swing back shut. Um, and they were dirt cheap. Like, he said it was the best hundred and eighty dollars they've ever spent. Yeah, really. And they just work. He has belties, um, so they're not big. Bigger than these. I think the only one that they only cow that they had to go through was a little calf just this year, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there there are I think ten or twelve calves somewhere. We could walk a little ways. There's got to be cows out there. Milkweed is due in July. That's her. She's a dwarf. Gussie's due in September. Daisy, I would have thought Daisy would already had her calf, but you know, she can keep it in there. I know. We don't necessarily <clears throat> keep super close track of breeding, so, I mean, if we see them, we write them down, but mm -hmm. if you have 50 cows, how yeah. many are you? Yeah, that's tough when you get that number. Carly is a modern girl. Um, she's five. I think four or five. She's very small. So how do you manage grazing? Um, <laughs> So our goal will be uh, moderate intensive grazing after we brush hog. Okay. So we're reclaiming CRP. So a lot mm -hmm. of what's out here is kind of just, I don't want to say mm -hmm. junk, but it's not the greatest. Um, so we're, uh, we're not done fencing. We have the north, mm -hmm. there's about 45 or 50 acres to the north that are going to get fenced. Okay. Um, we're actually going to have another Dexter Farmer family do that. The McKims are going to do it for us. Oh. oh. We love the McKins. That's where we get all our steers. Oh, cool. We're going down there in a couple weeks for two more. Yep, so they're going to come and do our fencing, hopefully, is the goal. So I know you're really big on conserving genetic diversity in your livestock as, like, restoring native Michigan prairies on the docket, too. So we have native prairie. <laughs> those were up there. That okay. was brush hog. That's native prairie. We have native prairie over um, on the north end as well. So there will be some native prairie. That's awesome. Um, and then we'll do a more of a diversified native grass mix for our fields. Mm. But I mean, right now it's like shrubbery. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a little wet there, <laughs> and it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a little wet until we fix it up a little bit. Uh, this was when they put it into CRP before they did CRP out here. They did Ducks Unlimited, which came in and created wetlands. Mm -hmm. And now we're in the process of seeing what wetlands have to stay because they've been here long enough and which ones that we can graze cattle on. Yeah. And maybe <coughs> maybe have wet grasslands. Yeah, it seems like there, I don't know what the rules are, but there should be a place for that in conservation, in yep. restoring ecosystems. There would have been bison here historically. And yep. this was a I, just, I think there's a lot of people like us who are trying to figure it out from scratch again. Well, that's what I was telling them. You know, like the small farming, homesteading channels are fun to watch for the most part. Everybody's doing something different, mm -hmm. you know, and you can take ideas and turn, make them your own. So, uh, so one thing that we do do is um, <laughs> uh, we let all of our Facebook followers name our cattle. We don't do it with pigs generally because there's just too many of them. But yeah. cows is pretty easy. Less than 100 a year. And you have a skein to the name, right? Oh, yeah. So, the skein is uh, the girl cow, the girl, the heifers are named after the cow, and the steers slash bulls are named after the bull. Okay. So, all of the L bull, all the L male calves are named after Lake, who was our breeding, one of our breeding bulls last year. So, Daphne's. Uh, who did Daphne have this year? Oh, she must have had a boy. No. Look, like Maverick is out of Miles. <clears throat> he's actually a pretty good looking little feller. Yeah. Total dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> he's in here because he ran through three fence lines. Three different times. Oh boy. He wanted to be with his mom. She's it's not abandoned. even. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, we cut now, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, no abilities. Um, but he wanted to be with his mom. Even though she doesn't oh, eat him. Yeah, it's kind of fun because the NRCS people have never seen cows that'll eat uh, the autumn olive. Autumn olive. Mm -hmm. the woody stuff. Yeah, they're over there like, look at this. Here's yeah. some beautiful grass. I'll eat the autumn olive. 
That's okay. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Make that go away. Well, that's what you read when you read about Dexter's, how they're yeah. good foragers. Yeah. So that's kind of our big goal, right, with Dexter's is we want to tr preserve the traditional and legacy lines, mm -hmm. but we also want to preserve those attributes that brought people to Dexter's in the first place. Yeah. I mean, no shame to anybody who does whatever they want to do with their animals, but if you want to breed Angus, breed uh, Angus, right? Like, yeah. we want small animals that are hardy uh, and do well. But, but you'll also say your beef is better than theirs. Yeah, I will. <laughs> <laughs> we do, and we do feed a little bit of grain. You know what? We, uh, our winters are rough here and we don't have shelter. And can they go through the winter? and have calves in the spring. Yeah, but then I feel like a really bad farmer when I got really skinny cows going out on grass with their calves. So I give them a touch of grain. They get about one pound per cow per day. Yeah. You may have already said this. How long have you been raising Dexters? Uh, seven years. Seven years. So we're, we're only four years behind. Yeah, so four years, <laughs> we gotta be ready for this, Mike. Yeah, we need about 100, 100 more acres. Yeah. Heard of this. That's enough. You too, Faith. They're calling their calves. <laughs> They're all sleeping somewhere in the shade. It's hot. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Artemis is one of my favorites. So, uh, she is one of the dehorn girls that got to stay. There's two of them. Her uh, non dwarfs that stayed. What makes her a favorite? Uh, Lots of things. I like her size. Mm -hmm. I like her structure. I like her utter. Yeah. And I absolutely love her personality. She's beautiful. Yeah. I'd like I'd, I'd like everybody to have a little bit more butt. So all of the AI bulls that we're breeding to have better butts. So do you guys, you breed um, Scottish and Irish breeds of cattle. Do you ever have any interactions with... Um, farmers across the pond, like when you're doing AI and stuff, do you bring in importing semen or anything? Um, so we've done a little bit of work with some people across the pond, but not a ton. We never have brought in semen. We debated bringing in some wood magic semen from uh, current alive wood magic animals that are pure of wood magic. Mm -hmm. um, but the cost is pretty high, and we were able to source some legacy semen that is pure wood magic anyways that's mm -hmm. just older um so that's what we do uh, i would love to get to go visit ireland and scotland i think it would be really special to get to see these animals where they were domesticated where it all began yeah that's kind of the crazy thing though like you go to ireland and they have dairy i guess but mm -hmm. dexter wise you got a lot of not what we have here. Like we have more technically pure Dexters here than they do there now. Uh, after the potato famine, they yeah. But I mean, they are wonderful animals. One of the crazy things that I, so I like white Dexters. We don't have one yet, but I'm gonna mm -hmm. get one. I'm gonna have white Dexter. Um, <laughs> just one. I don't. <laughs> um. I just think they're so fascinating. Yeah. And I'm, so I'm okay with upgrades. Um, I just like the idea and the, the preservation aspect of yes. animals. But it's a two-fold situation. I'm going to say that over and over again. And that's, you, ha you can't just breed for what's on paper. You mm -hmm. also have to breed for structure and function. And the ideal, right? Like, we don't need no 1500 pound Dexters. <clears throat> That's like the thing that I don't want to see. Right. That's not what Dexters are for. Correct. I mean, we have. It's always fun to hear. So we don't see a lot of uh, people. Either, a lot of the people that come to our farm either raise similar to what we raise mm -hmm. or have never raised cattle before. So mm -hmm. when we have people come out and they're like, oh, they're so small, I think, oh. Okay, well then I don't have to worry about it because I thought that one was a little big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Appalachian sunrise makes my skin. You with my eyes still closed, I feel it. The things that you really have to look for when you're breeding traditionals and legacies are udders mm -hmm. because 
for some reason, they haven't maintained a good udder in a lot of the lines. And maybe that's true with all the lines. Yeah. But some of those upgraded bulls definitely came with really good udders, right? Feet. The traditional lines still have those mountain feet. Mm -hmm. um, so they grow good hoofs. But we don't have mountains. So if you're, you got to keep an eye on those because they don't wear down like they would. When, when you said, uh, talked about the people who visit your farm, either are getting into Dexters or have Dexters. It just made me think of, Kelsey raises these dairy goats now. I could consider the dairy goat world, like these people, all dairy goat breeders, they're like magic trading cards. It's like, you have this <laughs> this <laughs> card. You're Nigerian dwarfs, don't you? We do, yep. <laughs> I've, I've emailed you guys, I think, when we were first getting started and our budget was small. Yeah. Not that it's big now, but... I think I've asked you guys about every single thing you've raised. Um, <laughs> we're not we're not strangers on the Facebook Messenger. <laughs> this is a a winter pasture, so it, it doesn't grow back quite as quickly. Okay. You need you need a box of honeybees. Uh, so we'll have thirty hives delivered this month. Really yep. awesome. Our we uh, we don't do bees. We have a local bee farm that does bees here. And then we buy the honey wholesale and sell it to our customers. Oh, that's perfect. Because I don't have time for bees. So both. That's, yeah. That's fun. I had 30 hives of my own last year, and luckily I lost them all. <laughs> I have four now, but... See, there's a honeybee. Maybe they're already yeah. over there. I didn't go look. It's, uh, it's, it's a, a lot of work. We probably have some wild hives, too. Like Mike was running 30 hives. Every time a storm came, we'd have a swarm. Well, it was like... You wake up in the morning, today feels kind of swarmy, <laughs> and sure enough, midday, see the bees flying, and then they, they, they would go on these short little apple trees that we have, so they're easy to catch, but that's how I ended up 30. So, uh, Galileo Legacy Bull, he's got a good butt. He's a dwarf, obviously. Yeah. He's got a good butt. We'll keep him around. My only problem with him is he's related to three of our Legacy Girls. And then when we talked about Miles and his weird bellied calves, mm -hmm. like you got Mikey, Matt, and Milton over here, not Linus. Um, M names, right? Yep. Um, so you got a little weird pot belly, but those guys are, they're 2020 calves. So he's a 2020, 2019. He'll go to butcher this fall and next spring. So him, that's Freddy, he doesn't count. Who are you? That's Frodo. Mm, he's a this year, last year calf. So what do your steers hang at? Uh, we haven't done enough to, to make a good comparison. Yeah. I would like to say uh, 250, 300 pounds. Okay. okay. At what age? Three. 30 months. Mm -hmm. We push them right to the end. Yeah, we got one that's scheduled the end of this month and... I'm thinking it'll be around 500 pounds at, um, hanging. Uh, the other one we have, we're going to hold off a little bit, but he's quite a bit smaller. Yeah. This was, That's kind of one of the reasons we added a bit of grain, too, is mm -hmm. because it, they can make it through the winter and survive, but mm -hmm. then they lose so much weight, and then you need them to put on weight in the winter, not yeah. lose weight. Um, so just a little touch of grain, and it just really saves us a lot. Oh, yeah. And it's it's not always easy to buy... 500 round bales of great hay, right? Yeah. Good hay. And good. My goal is good hay. Mm -hmm. We have, let's see. Uh, there are, one of our, our high park bull we talked about was Parker. Yeah. Here's this white guy over here. Parker. Do you know, uh, the so yeah, remember I told you he had a big neck. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Hey. So it's de dehorned, covered in flies. Oh, Katya. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Kelsey. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know their names yet? <laughs> yeah. You've been here for over an hour. I, I don't think, I think I remember Maverick in that <laughs> Just because of the Top Gun movie. <laughs> and Betty the Bitch, don't forget her. Yeah. <laughs> you never saw her though. I'm waiting for her to come running out of the bush. <laughs> <laughs> no, she just runs away. Let's see how big of a bitch she is. She's yeah. not. 
So not one of our breeding. So he came with the Ellington herd. Mm -hmm. is, is that the one from the, you got from the UP? No. Nope. And then the Evo had a calf on the way home. No, that would have been yes. It, it, so it would have been a calf on the way home, but that was Wisconsin. Okay. So we got a herd from Wisconsin last year in the spring, and then a herd from the UP in December. Yeah, see, we, we follow your Facebook page. So <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's, it's certain things you remember. <laughs> We're not stalkers. That would be... <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> we are. Our life is pretty open, I guess. So, whatever. <clears throat> not super cool. I, I don't have a YouTube channel. We've debated it. Yeah. But I ain't got time for that. Wow. Well, I was talking to the 1870s homestead people about this, how the reason why I think there's not a lot of like homesteady YouTube channels in the Michigan is because in the winter time, it's too damn cold. Your hands are freezing trying to run a uh, camera and then the batteries freeze up. And then in the summertime where you have time to do stuff, you're too busy to set up a camera and move it 17 places at a time. <laughs> while you're doing it. While you're doing it. And then the battery gets too hot and your camera shuts down. So it's like, yeah. I like I like doing this type of YouTube stuff. It's it's, it's fun. It's easy to. Like well, we're all trying to reinvent the wheel, and it's useful to see how other people make their ground. You're like, yeah, how I, do you get it done? One thing that we really try to focus on is like, not necessarily giant scale, but how do the bigger guys make their lives easier? And what? Mm -hmm. So like, I turned on and off the fence with my. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. That's like the most. Do you know how awful it is to be way out yonder? And oh. you're like, oh. Is somebody by the barn? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's never anybody here. So then you make a pile of something and jump over. Uh, Ryan, thank you so much for having us out. Um, if you're local to Barryton and you're looking for awesome, high quality pork, um, or do you sell beef also? Yep. Dexter beef, um, two men and a hen, they can hook you up. Uh, and we really appreciate the tour. Is of there course. anything else you want people to know or where they can find out more about your farm? You can find out more about us on our website at twomenandahen.com or check us out on Facebook or Instagram, same name. All right, awesome. Thank you guys. Thank you.